Mary Stewart by Friedrich Schiller, translated by David Harrower and adapted for radio by Robin Brooks. What are you doing? Ah! No, stop, that's... Jewellery! Where did this come from? Have you watched? Have you searched? But you still have valuables hidden away. Those are for uh-huh. private papers. Those are drafts of letters to the Queen of England. Then I shall hand them on. What's this? Uh, don't touch that. A royal coronet set with French lilies. This is outrageous. It's not enough you rob her of her power. You also stoop to confiscate her possessions. Her hands have to be kept empty. Everything she touches turns into a weapon against us. To be allowed no comforts? Denial and humiliation can help atone for a vice-ridden if life. She made mistakes in her youth. That's between her and God. She should not be judged here. England has no right to... England is where she'll be judged. England is where she committed treason. How could she, when she's so closely guarded? She armed assassins against our Queen... She seduced that murderous coward Babington with letters from behind these walls. And Norfolk? Iron bars weren't enough to stop her getting to Norfolk. One of this country's wisest men, sacrificed to the executioner's axe. And does it stop there? No. Madmen still rush headlong towards death for her cause. The scaffolds are never empty. It will only end when she herself is executed. It was a cursed day when our country showed its hospitality to Mary Stuart. Hospitality? My poor lady was an exile. She came seeking protection from a royal cousin. Your country's hospitality has been imprisonment since the day she arrived, and then to summon her before a court like some common criminal. She was already a murderer when she arrived here. She came to drag us back to the days of Bloody Mary, to turn England Catholic and sell us to the French. Why does she not give up her claim to England's throne, hmm? But no, she prefers this prison. She believes she'll conquer this island from her cell. You think that's what she does here? She's buried alive. She sees no human face except your ugly mug and that silly young nephew of yours you brought to help guard her. Look now, she's coming. Mistress, Mistress Jane, Paulette broke into your cupboard. Calm yourself. He's taking your bridal jewels. Oh, they're trinkets, Jane. And the letters. Sir. Madam. You have taken by force what I intended to hand over to you. You have there a letter written to my royal sister. Will you give me your word you will deliver it to her? And not into Burnley's grasping hands? I will decide what is done with it. It asks a favour, to meet her, the cousin now still to see with my own eyes. Elizabeth and I are of the same family. She's of my sex and standing. I will only speak to her. My lady. No, Paul, it wait. You leave me again, sir, with the agony of uncertainty. It's been a month since the commissioners descended upon me here and made me stand unprepared before their illegal court. Have I been judged innocent or not? Am I condemned to die? I don't know. You like things done quickly here. Maybe a murderer will descend upon me just like the commissioners did. Uncle. I know nothing, my lady. Uncle. Mortimer. What is it? Burley's here. Tell him I'm coming right away. Very well. Sir, I respect your age, but this nephew of yours, Mortimer, I cannot bear his impertinence. He's no fool. He's a travelled man. Recently to Paris and Reims, and with a staunch English heart. Your arts will be wasted on him. Good day, my lady. How could he speak to you like that? When I was young, I had nothing but flattery. I listened too easily to it. My lady, don't lose heart. I can see him, Jane. Darnley's ghost. Come from the grave to taunt me. Don't think these thoughts. Today is the anniversary of his death. The church has forgiven you. The guilt will never be buried. 
Darnley wants revenge. You didn't murder him. I let it happen. You were too young. It weighs on me. It always has. It was his fault. His insults, his arrogance. You raised him from obscurity. You led him from your bed to your throne. And how did he thank you? Showed you disrespect. <laughs> Mistreated you. Had Rizzio. No. Had your <laughs> favourite stabbed to death in front of you. All you did was avenge that. And now this is him avenging me. It was Bothwell who murdered Darnley. You were blinded by love for Bothwell. He summoned spirits to rob you of your senses. I forced the judges to acquit him of Darnley's murder, and then I gave him my hand in marriage. It was terrible, but you've repented. Your heart's kind. Nothing has blackened your life since. Make peace with yourself. Elizabeth and her parliament are not your judges. Who's there? Madam. It's the nephew Mortimer. I'll send him away. Leave us. I must talk with Mary Stewart. Uh, uh, Jane, don't go. My lady. Oh, keep away from me. Oh, God. Don't be afraid, my lady. This is for go. you. <laughs> A letter? You, woman, guard the door. My uncle must not know. Do as he says, Jane. My lady. Go, go on. Yes, madam. Trust Sir Mortimer who brings you this letter, he is the most loyal friend you have in England. It's signed by your uncle, the Cardinal of Lorraine. Uh, is this a trick? Time is short. My uncle will be coming with Burley any minute to tell you the judge's verdict. But God has planned your rescue. Explain yourself. I was raised a Puritan, Your Majesty. Oh. Fed with hatred for Catholicism. But when I was 20, I had this sudden desire to get away and go to Europe. I went to France first, then to Italy, Rome, the colonnades, the triumphal arches, and the art. I'd never felt the true power of art before, and inside every church, the heavenly music. I watched as the Pope took mass. His house is a heavenly kingdom. Don't remember I am a wretched prisoner. So was I. But my prison opened and I walked from it into the beautiful day of life. I became a true believer. I met others, Scotsmen, Frenchmen. They took me to meet your uncle, the Cardinal. Does he still think of me? Tell me about him. He banished all my doubts and welcomed me into the one true church. He showed me a picture of a woman. It moved me and fascinated me. He told me it was right to feel, as I did, that she was the most beautiful woman in the world, but also the most suffering, suffering in an English prison for the sake of the Catholic faith. He's still with me then. I haven't lost everything. You are a martyr. He told me how thirsty England is for your blood. You are descended from the house of Tudor. You alone are entitled to rule England and Britain, not this unlawful Elizabeth conceived in an adulterous bed. Henry, her own father, dismissed her as his bastard daughter. This nation that holds you prisoner, my lady, belongs to you. The English crown is yours by right. This right is the cause of all my suffering. When they moved you here from Shrewsbury's castle, I knew destiny was calling me. I'd been chosen to free you. The cardinal blessed me and I set sail and landed here ten days ago. And then I saw you, my lady... Not a picture in the flesh. Oh, this castle holds a beautiful royal treasure. She's right to hide you away. England's youth would rise up and draw their swords if they were to see their true queen. If only they all saw with your eyes. Saw your suffering too. And your gentleness and your composure. And your beauty. But time's against us. Every hour brings the danger nearer. I can't keep it from you any longer. Well, has the sentence been passed? The judges found you guilty. Both houses of Parliament want you sentenced immediately. But Elizabeth's delaying her final decision, not out of mercy, expediency. She wants to be seen to be bowing to pressure that her hand was forced. So it's life imprisonment, then? No. That's not enough for them. If you live, her fear of you lives too. Your death makes her throne safe. She'd dare 
to put me on an executioner's block. There's no doubt. <gasps> Is she not afraid of France? She's negotiating peace with France. The Duke of Anjou will get her hand and her throne. So my head will be given to the people. How could they countenance that? You wouldn't be the first royal woman to go to the scaffold. Her own mother, Anne Boleyn, and Catherine Howard and Lady Grey. It would be easier for them to have me quietly murdered. Every glass I drink from, I wonder if it's been sent with her blessing. But it won't happen, I promise. We're ready, we'll free you. I've twelve men with me. We received the sacrament together this morning. We meet at Obespin's palace, the French ambassador. He knows of our plan. You don't know what you're doing. Haven't you seen Babington's head? Tichburn's head stuck on spikes on London Bridge? Countless other men have died for me too. Burley will know of you. He'll have an informer amongst you. Go, if there's still time. I'm not scared. It'd be an honour to die for your freedom. No, they're too strong. They've eyes everywhere. All of England stands guard outside my prison. Only Elizabeth's will can open the gates for me. That will never happen. Then there is someone else. Who? Lord Leicester. Leicester? Elizabeth's favourite? The man who persecutes you? Go to him. Tell him what you've told me. Take this letter. Huh. Take it. I've been carrying it for months. I couldn't get it to him because of your uncle, but now my guardian angel has sent you. Your Majesty. But how can I... Trust Lester. And he will trust you. Mistress, Pollitt's coming with another man. My uncle is bringing Lord Burley. You must go. Yes. Be ready, my queen. Be calm. You know what he's come to tell you. God bless you. My Lord Burley... I come as an envoy from the Court of Justice. Is it a point, my lord? When you submitted I to submitted the court... I submitted to nothing. I would never have given away my royal prerogative, the honour of my people and of my son. English law states that the accused must be judged by a jury of their equals. Who is my equal in your high commission? Only kings are my peers. You heard the accusation. So that I could refute them. My lady... You breathe English air. You enjoy the protection and benefit of the law. And so you are subject to its ruler. I breathe the air of an English prison. I'm not a citizen of this kingdom. I am the rightful queen of a foreign power. I reject your judges. The judges are distinguished men of an independent mind. Beyond the influence of a monarch, presiding over a noble people, ensuring them freedom and justice. I don't see them like that. I see them as eunuchs in a harem, flattering each and every whim of their sultan, my great uncle, Henry the Eighth. The House of Lords is as easily swayed as the Commons. It passes a law, then renounces it, ratifies a marriage, then annuls it, all at their ruler's command. Henry's daughter, a bastard one day, and then crowned queen the next. These worthy men and their exchangeable convictions have seen their nation's faith change four times under four rulers. For someone who... Besides, an Englishman will never show a Scotsman justice. That's an old saying. Nature cast our two fiery people adrift on an ocean raft and then divided it unequally so they'd fight over it. The narrow bed of the Tweed is all that separates us and it runs red with our army's blood. For a thousand years we've stared from opposite banks, swords drawn. Every enemy of England has always had Scotland's support. And if there's civil strife in Scotland's cities, the English add fuel to the fire. This ancient hatred will never end until our parliaments are joined. Until one sovereign reigns over the whole island. And that sovereign would be a Stuart. I won't deny it. I hoped to unite the two nations. Instead, I am the victim of their hate and abiding jealousy. You hoped, my lady, for civil war, for the country to be set on fire. That's how you planned to capture England's throne. That is not true. I swear by God, I did not. Where is your proof? I did not come here to argue. <laughs> the court has found against you. 
The Act of Association forbids any force of arms to be raised in a claim of right to the throne, and that any person who does so will be condemned to death. That Act was passed solely for my benefit. It was only ever to be used against me. And the men who worded it are the same men who pronounced my sentence. It was meant as a warning. You knew the consequences, but you corresponded with the traitor Babington, guiding his plot from yourself. How did I do that? Show me the letters. You were shown them in court. Copies of them, in handwriting I didn't recognise. You've no proof that I dictated them. Absolutely none. Babington admitted it before his death. Why was there such a hurry to kill him before I could speak to him? Both your secretaries, Gilbert Curl and Claude Now, swore under oath that those letters were dictated by you. So I'm to be executed on the testimony of disloyal servants? You yourself called Curl a man of virtue and good character. He was, before you tortured him. He swore a free oath. Not in front of me. These two witnesses, my secretaries, are still alive, my lord? Yes. Then let them repeat their claims to my face. Even a common murderer has the right to that. Why wasn't Babington brought face to face with me? The Babington plot is not the only... But it's the only charge that I am accused of. Stick to the point. It was also proven you negotiated with Mendoza, the Spanish ambassador. Stick to the point. That you plotted to overthrow this country's religion, inciting all of Europe to go to war with England. Oh, don't pretend it's justice. These are the workings of power. A struggle for power between myself and England. You're a prisoner, madam. You have no power to call upon. No, she can exercise her power. She can have me killed. Sacrifice me for her security, but be honest enough to call it power. This is not justice. The world will not be deceived. Why pretend? Tell your queen to show herself for what she is. Good day to you, my lord. Paulet. My Lord Burley. So much defiance, Paulet. No tears at the verdict, nothing showed in her face. It's because she knows the Queen's wavering mind. That's what makes her strong. Why could the Stuart not have died before she came to England? Amen to that, my Lord. Or some sickness have killed her in her prison. Mm. We passed our sentence in vain. The Queen has the royal privilege of mercy, and she must use it. To let lawful justice run its course would be disastrous. The world would not believe it to be justice. So she must live? No, she must not live. No. Word could get out that she's sick, that she's worsening, has quietly faded into death, so that she may also die in people's memory. Your reputation would remain unblemished. But not my conscience. Her life is sacred to me. She was placed under my guard. I will guard her with my life. My Lord Kent, is the tournament over? Oh, you missed a truly fine spectacle, Sir William. Tastefully devised and nobly presented. We saw the virginal fortress of beauty and chastity laid siege to by the forces of desire. And the treaty's been amended. The French have agreed to our marriage terms. Monsieur the Duke of Anjou will take mass in a private chapel, but he will officially honour and observe our state religion. So the Queen will walk to her bridal chamber as the Stuart walks towards death. Hush! The Queen approaches. With the French ambassador. Your gracious majesty, grant us we may send back the happy news that Monsieur, our royal master, the Duke of Anjou, longs for. Men are posted at Calais to swiftly speed your royal consent to his anticipating ear. Count Orpsbeen, press me no further. This is no time to light the torch of marriage. The sky hangs black over our country. Mourning dress would be more fitting than bridal robes. A fatal blow threatens to end my rule and my life. Perhaps then, Your Majesty, just a promise that in less troubled days you will fulfill. Monarchs are slaves to their rank. They are not allowed to follow their hearts. My own desire was always to die unmarried. But my subjects are not content. 
They're already thinking of the time after me. To rule in the present is not enough. I have to sacrifice myself for their future happiness also. For them, I must give up my virgin freedom and have a lord and master forced upon me. This shows me what I am to them, a mere woman. And I believed I had ruled like a man and like a king. Your rule has glorified every virtue, Your Majesty. My Lord Burley. And of course, no man lives who deserves that you sacrifice your freedom to him. My Lord Lester. Yet, if birth, nobility and courage make one worthy, then that man is en jeu. Lester, give me your ring. Majesty. A queen is no different after all from common woman. This ring stands for the same duty, the same servitude. A ring signifies marriage, but it's from rings that chains are made. Take this as a gift to your master. There's no chain yet, but from it one will undoubtedly form. I receive this ring in his name, your majesty. May all mistrust between our two nations fade. Let the crowns of Britain and France embrace each other henceforth. Your noble majesty, this is a joyous day. The light of mercy shines from your face. Could perhaps some of it reflect upon an unfortunate princess, a cause of concern to both France and Britain alike? Enough, my lord. You are confusing two separate matters. If France is serious about this alliance, it can be no friend to my enemy. Um, but it would be unworthy, surely, for France to ignore a sister Catholic and the widow of our king, Francois. It is a matter of honor and of humanity. Then I acknowledge your country's concern, while I, England's queen, will act as such. Majesty. My Lord Ambassador. So, my lords... Your Majesty, sir. Your opinions on this matter? My Lord Burley? Your Majesty, today you have granted your people their dearest wish. Only one sorrow still bedevils us, one last sacrifice that the whole country desires. Make it, and this day will ensure England's eternal happiness. What more do my people wish for? The head of Mary Stuart. Roman Catholicism still has many secret followers on this island, all of them hostile to your reign, their hearts loyal to the Stuart. Her life is your death. Her death, your life. My lord, I know this comes from loyalty, but this desire for blood, I hate it with all my soul. Is there no other course? Lord Shrewsbury, what is your opinion? Your Majesty, your people love you for the peace you have brought to this kingdom. But that must not be at the expense of our reputation. I have no intention of staining England's reputation. Then you must consider other ways to save this country. I am an old man nearing his grave. I never want it said that in your state council, compassion was ignored in favor of intolerance and selfishness. You yourself have never seen her in the flesh. Your heart is closed to her. It is said she had her husband murdered and that she married the man who murdered him. And yes, that is a grave crime. Oh. But, but it was committed in a dark, unhappy time in the upheaval of civil war. She was weak and surrounded by weak men. Not all women are weak. I hear nothing of weakness. You were raised in adversity. I was. You were in the tower, I know. There were no flatterers or advisers there. You, you learned self-discipline, how to apply your mind and think things through. But God was not so attentive to the other poor girl. She was uprooted to France, to a court full of pleasure seekers and drunkards. She was blinded by the debauchery all around her. Also, she has been given the vain gift of beauty. Her charms must be extraordinary to set an old man so ablaze. <clears throat> You're very quiet, my Lord Lester. Struck dumb, my queen. Amazed at these fairy tales and scare stories. What are you afraid of? Her claim to this country? Do you really think England would embrace a papist ruler? 
turn from their adored monarch to Darnley's murderer? These men who press you for a successor, who can't see you married fast enough to save the state and the church from mortal danger, why are they in so much haste? You're in the prime of your youth, while each day she bends closer to her grave. My Lord Lester hasn't always spoken this way. No, Burley. It's, it's true I voted for her death in court. But we're in council now, debating advantage, not justice. Her only protector, France, has abandoned her. What's there to fear? Why kill her? She's dead already. Contempt is death. Don't bring her to life through pity. I say let her live, but under threat of death. If any arms are raised in her cause, then the axe should fall. Majesty, Paulet and his nephew. Very well. Admit them. Majesty. Wait, my lords, please, all of you. I must consider your opinions. Majesty. Majesty. Paulet. Your Majesty. This is my nephew Mortimer, newly returned from his travels. He comes to kneel at your feet and offer his loyal vow. Long live our royal majesty. You are welcome, sir. My nephew has in his possession secret coded letters meant for the Queen of Scotland. What do they tell us? They're dumbfounded that France has abandoned them and allied itself with England. Their hopes are now set on Spain. Oh, just as Walsingham told us. <clears throat> I was told you renounced your faith, Sir Mortimer. As a pretense to serve you. Majesty. Paulet. This is for you. What is it? A letter from the Queen of Scotland. Give that to me. Forgive me, my Lord Burley. She asked that it be given to the Queen herself. I will read it. What has she written? She's requesting a meeting with Her Majesty, my Lord Burley. She has forfeited any such privilege. She's incited murder, attempted to kill our Queen. Anyone with any loyalty to our monarch could not agree to it. And if the Queen wishes it, you would forbid it. The Queen cannot speak with any person condemned to die. The sentence cannot be carried out if the Queen shows her face. The royal presence bestows grace and pardon. How oh, the fortune of man changes on this earth. This once proud Queen, how far she has fallen. France's throne is the oldest in Christendom. But one crown was not enough for her. She dreamt of wearing three. Forgive me, my lords, it cuts my heart that earthly objects are so insecure that the dreadful fate of mankind should pass so closely by me. Your Majesty. Shrewsbury. God moves your heart. She has suffered for her guilt. End her suffering. Agree to this meeting. Burley. Stand firm, Your Majesty. You can neither pardon her nor save her. My Lord Lester. The Queen is wise. She does not need us to make the best choice. Meeting of the Queen's has nothing to do with the course of justice. It's worthy of Elizabeth's great soul that she be allowed to follow the urging of her heart, while justice keeps to its strict course. We will find means to unite what mercy demands and necessity imposes. Now, leave me, all of you. Majesty. Your Majesty. Majesty. All but you, Mortimer. Majesty. A word with you, Mortimer. Your skill in the art of deception shows a maturity beyond your age. Fate has called you to a great course. I prophesy it. And happily for you, I have the power to make my prophecies come true. Majesty. You have come to know England's enemies, the extent of their hate, their tireless, bloody plotting. As long as she lives, their hope is kept alive. God has protected me until now. Yet the crown on my head trembles. As soon as you command it, she will die. But she will be executed by my order, and I shall always be hated for it. I cannot save my name. That is the worst of it. It's a just cause. What does appearance matter? You don't know the world. I would rather that my part in her death always stays in doubt. Well, then the best thing would be... Of course that would be the best thing. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. You are an altogether different man from your uncle. 
Then can I? Your name will be safe. If you were to wake me one morning, sir, with the news that Mary Stuart had passed away in the night... I will not fail you. So. And when will I be able to sleep in peace once again? At the next new moon. My gratitude will have to borrow the cover of night. Don't be sorry. Silence is the god of happy men. The closest, most intimate ties are bound in secrecy. Farewell, sir. Majesty. Elizabeth, my queen, you're dishonest and you're deceiving. So I will deceive you. I will betray you. It'll be an honor for me. Do I look like a murderer? Did you see it in my face? Show off your faint piety and mercy to all the world while you secretly wait for her to be murdered. It only buys me more time for her rescue. And I know what reward you have in mind for me. <laughs> As if you are a reward. Who are you, pathetic woman? And what do you have to give? The vanity of fame and royal favor means nothing to me. Only Mary has life. She has the light and grace and youth. God is with her. You, Elizabeth, only death is around you. You've never given your heart to anyone. You don't know what it's like, how love invigorates a man. Now I must find Lord Lester, give him Mary's letter. I hate this. I could save it myself. I could do it alone if I wanted. They talk about me forever, the danger I faced, the prize I won. You wish to speak in private? If you can assure me, I dare do so, my Lord Lester. And how do I know I can trust you? I might ask you the same. So, who trusts the other first? Whoever's in least danger. You then? You are an esteemed and respected lord. I'm a nobody. True. But a single damning testimony would ruin me. The powerful Earl of Leicester deigns to admit that. I can set an example to him. Then do it, and I will follow you. Here. Yeah. What is this? A letter from the Queen of Scotland. Not so loud. Do you know what she's written here? No. But she's told you. She's told me nothing. How did you manage to win her trust? With a letter written for me by her uncle, the Cardinal. <laughs> I knew of your conversion. Give me your hand. Forgive me my doubts, but I must be careful here. Walsingham and Burley hate me. They set traps for me. You could have been their creature. You may be surprised, sir, at my sudden change of heart towards Mary. I never hated her. But it was necessary that I be seen to, because she was once intended for me. You may know this. Intended for me for many years before she married Darnley. I turned my back on her. I rejected happiness. Now I long for her, and I will risk my life for her. A great sacrifice. Times have changed. Ambition blinded me to youth and beauty. Mary's hand was too small a prize for me. I'd set my sights on England's queen. The queen's affection for you is well known. Uh, so it may seem. But it's been ten wasted years now. Ten years of constant courtship. I've had to suffer vanity... Continual mood changes. Indulge her petty, ridiculous whims. Tenderness one day, pushed aside the next, in favor, then rejected. She has tormented me. And guarded like a, a prisoner by her jealousy. Scolded like a schoolboy. Shouted at like a servant. I pity you, sir. And now the prize is stolen from me by a young Frenchman. Her hand and her favor are taken from me. All my hopes founded. From the wreckage of my fortune, I reached to grab a lifeline. Mary, my first beautiful hope. My heart knew what a treasure it had lost compared to the cold ambition that replaced it. I knew her misery was my fault. It horrified me. And I resolved to rescue her, to possess her again. I got word to her through a friend and told her of my heart's decision. And now, this letter is her reply. She forgives me. And if I save her from this prison, she promises to give herself to me. You've done nothing. 
You let her be condemned. You voted for her death. Since she was sent to Fotheringay, every path to her has been blocked. I had to go along with her persecution, but I would not have let her go to her death. I will do everything to prevent that until we find a way to free her. The way's been found. I will free her. That's why I'm here. My plan's already formed. Your support will help us succeed. What are you talking about? I will force open her prison gates. I have men ready. You have accomplices? What are you dragging me into? Has my name been used in this? It has not. You want to rescue and possess Mary Stewart. You should be delighted. You sound panic. Force of arms is useless. So is delay. The risk is too great. You want to win her. We only want to rescue her and we are less cautious. You'll die like Babington. If we fail, we'll drag her down with us. If we don't act, she will never be free. You're going to destroy everything. What have you done to save her? I could have murdered her. The Queen asked me to. She believes I will do it today. The Queen? Yes. And you agreed? So that she'd ask no one else. Good. Good. This buys us time. No, we are losing time. The Queen thinks you're going to kill Mary. She can afford to look merciful. If I could talk her into a meeting with Mary, our hands would be tied. But he's right. If the Queen sees a prisoner, the sentence can't be carried out. You've power in your hands. Raise an army. Mary has many secret allies. There are hundreds of men desperate to be shown a lead. Defy Elizabeth. Take her to one of your castles and keep her there until she releases Mary. <laughs> you have no idea how things stand in her court. How tight a hold she has over us. That woman has all of us, everything, under lock and key. Don't rush into anything. Do you hear me? Someone's coming. Get away from here. Go. So do I take nothing back to Mary. Take her my vow of eternal love. Take her yourself. I'm her rescuer, not your go-between. Who was that? I heard a voice. It was Sir Mortimer, Majesty. Lester? You look flustered. I've never seen you look so beautiful. To look at you is to feel again the pain of what I've lost. What have you lost? Your heart. This young Prince of Anjou has never even seen you. I love you. If you had been born a shepherdess and I was king, I would lay my crown at your feet. Don't, Robert. Can't you feel pity for me? I'm not allowed to follow my heart. I'd happily give the crown to the man who moves my heart like no one else. Mary Stuart did. She let herself do whatever she wanted. I took on the responsibilities of office. She never did. I could have lived like her, but I chose to follow my royal duty. And so many men admire her. So many desire her. Even Shrewsbury, have you seen his eyes light up when he talks about her. He was her warder. She bewitched him. Her beauty. Is it true? I hear about it so often. But paintings flatter and descriptions exaggerate. Why are you looking at me like that? I was comparing you with her in my mind. <sighs> the pleasure I'd get. If it could be done secretly... To see you standing next to her, the victory you'd have over her, you would humiliate her. She is younger. She doesn't look it. Suffering has aged her. She has no hope left in her life. If you paraded your happiness as the bride of a French prince... I could see her, I suppose. If she's asked it as a favor of you, make it a punishment. You could send her to the scaffold. But your superior beauty, that would really kill her. Your beauty, your modesty, your virtue, your crown, and now to be married. You saw how dazzled I was by your appearance. What if you were to go to her now, just as you are? Now? No, no, I can't, Lester. I have to consider it first. I must talk to Burley. Oh, Burley thinks only of what will serve the state. But you have your own rights as a woman. You have to decide, not your statesman. Though it would be politic to see her, it would be a generous act that would undoubtedly win public approval. Afterwards, you can rid yourself of her in whichever way you please. 
wouldn't be right to see her as she is now, so reduced. It would be painful. You don't have to be seen by her. Listen, you have an opportunity today. The Great Hunt passes through Fotheringay. Oh. She could be granted a walk through the park and you would be there. You could stay hidden. If this is foolishness, Lester, it's yours, not mine. No, but I can't refuse you anything today. I know the hurt I've caused you. This is how favour is shown. Agreeing to something that one shouldn't. Your Majesty. You are too fast. Wait for me. I feel like a child again. Running on grass. Have I really been freed? I want to drink the air. The free, heavenly air. It's still a prison. There are still walls beyond those trees. Oh, don't spoil it, Jane. Let me dream. The vastness of heaven is above me. Those grey mountains, covered in mist. That's where my country begins. And the clouds overhead are sailing towards France. I wish I could sail with them. Tell France I think about her. Always. <laughs> they move so freely across the sky. <laughs> they can't be held by Elizabeth. Look. A fisherman rowing to the bank. His boat is small, but it could save me. And don't. You know their spies watch her every move. Today hasn't happened by chance. This small favour... Signals a greater one. This is Lord Leicester's doing. Oh, I don't know what they're trying to do to us. Yesterday they announced your death, and today this. Oh, God. Do you hear that? I, I know that sound so well. I used to hear it in the highlands and the mountains, the excitement, the thrill of the chase. If I could be on a horse now. So, have I finally made you happy, my lady? Polish? Do I, for once, earn your thanks? Oh, you did this. Why not? I, I gave the Queen your letter. You did? I, so it has won me this. And more. Oh, what do you mean, sir? Her Majesty is riding with the hunt. What? She'll be here in a matter of minutes. Oh, your lady. Oh. This is not what you wanted. No, I'm not ready. I feel faint. <laughs> Shrewsbury! My lady! Shrewsbury, I can't see her. Have courage, madam. I have waited for this. Years for this. Rehearsed every word to move her, to touch her. Now I've forgotten everything. There is nothing inside me except hatred and the burning fire of my suffering. I have no kind thoughts left. The spirits of hell crowd round me, shaking their serpent hair. Put aside what you feel. Oh. She is the powerful one. Be humble before her. Oh, can't do it. You must. Be calm. Appeal to her benevolence. Don't insist on your rights. Now is not the time. We should never meet. No good will come of it. Fire would sooner embrace water or the lamb kiss the tiger. Her offences against me are too great. There can never be reconciliation. She was moved by your letter. There were tears in her eyes. She is not unfeeling. Take heart. Dear Shrewsbury, I wish you were still my jailer. I've been treated so harshly. Forget that now. You must show only humility. Oh, is my evil angel Burley with her? No. Only Lord Lester. Oh. Lester. There's nothing to fear from him. He made the Queen agree to this meeting. I knew it. What do you mean by that? The Queen approaches. It's Elizabeth. Oh, oh God. She has a face without a heart. What estate is this? Fotheringay Castle. We'll rest here a while. 
Who's that lady? Your Majesty, you're at Fotheringham. Who has done this? Lord Lester? Heaven has guided your path, Majesty. Now let its generosity and sympathy do the same. Your Majesty, you see before you're an unhappy woman. I was told of a woman bent with sorrow and misfortune. I see only pride here. I will forget who I am, what I have suffered. Fall at the feet of she who's forced me so low. Heaven has favoured you, my royal sister. Crowned you the victor. I bow to the God that chose it be you. Will you not be equally gracious? Do not leave me kneeling in shame. You are in your place, Lady Mary. It is only by God's mercy that I am not lying at your feet as you now lie at mine. Human fortunes can change. We both have Tudor blood in our veins. Do not disgrace it in front of these men. <clears throat> Dear God, you are like a rock, harsh and unyielding. Everything, my life, my fate, hangs on my words and tears. My heart wants to open to you so it can open yours, but your icy expression just closes it up again. You asked to speak to me. What did you wish to say? Where do I begin? I can't speak for my own cause without accusing you, and I don't want to do that. You have behaved unjustly. I am a queen like you are, but you've held me prisoner. I have been separated from my friends. I have suffered humiliating privation. I have been put through a disgraceful court of law. Enough. Let that be forgotten. Forever. I will call it fate. Neither of us are guilty. It was an evil spirit. It sparked hatred in our hearts. Hatred that has been in us since our youth and has grown as we have grown. The flames fanned by evil people and mad zealots. But it's only ourselves now. No one can act for us. Speak, sister. Speak now. Tell me my crime and I will seek to answer you. Don't accuse fate. Accuse your black heart. Accuse the dark ambition of the Stuarts. There was no argument between us until your uncle, the Duke of Guise, persuaded you to take on my coat of arms, my royal title, and engage in a fight to the death with me. Who did he not try to turn against me? The tongues of priests, the swords of nations, the terrible weapons of religious hate. Even here, in our peaceful nation, he stirred unrest. But God is with me. Your priest has lost the field. The blow he aimed at my head will now strike off yours. I am in God's hands. You cannot overstep your power like this. <laughs> Who is there to prevent me? Kinship and the law of nations are nothing when the Church of Rome severs the bonds of duty and sanctions the murder of kings. I practice only what your priests teach. Tell me, what's my guarantee if I were to free you? What lock would secure your loyalty? Force is my only security. I will make no alliance with a nest of vipers. You've only ever seen me as an enemy, a foreigner. If you'd named me your heir, which is my right, you would now have a loyal friend and a loving cousin. Name you my heir? While you try to ensnare me with your treachery, seducing my people, trapping our noble youth in the tangle of your net? Then rule in peace. I renounce all claim to this kingdom. You've won. My spirit is crushed. You've done the worst you could do. Destroyed me in the flower of my youth. End it now, Sister Queen. Pronounce my sentence. You surely didn't come only to mock me. Say to me, you're free, Mary. Say, you felt my power. Now, accept my generosity. One word undoes everything. Give me back my life and my liberty.
You make me wait. I'll wait. If you don't speak, woe betide you. You should leave me with a blessing like a goddess. Do you admit defeat? Is your scheming over with? No more assassins or madmen. It is over, Lady Mary. You will seduce no more of them. No one wants to be your... What? Fourth husband? God grant me patience. So, Lord Lester, this is the charm which no man can resist and no woman dare compete with. It's an easily earned reputation. To be commonly admired, uh, only needs to be commonly available. This is too much. <laughs> oh, the mask slipped. My faults were human. They were the faults of youth. I was seduced by power, but I've never denied it or tried to hide the fact. The world believes the worst about me, but I can say this. I am better than my reputation, but what of you? In times to come with your royal robes are pulled aside, the virginal robes in which you hide your burning secret lust. Virtue is something your mother could never bequeath you, or legitimacy. We know why Anne Boleyn was sent to her death. In the name of God, is this moderation, Lady Mary? Is this humility? Moderation? I have taken all a human being can take. My Lord Shrewsbury, I will not be patient. I have suppressed my resentment long enough. Now it has broken from its cage. He who gave the basilisk his death eyes, give me a tongue of poison! How oh, dare she! She is beside herself, Majesty. Forgive her anger. The throne of England has been desecrated by a bastard! Away! The people cheated by a cunning swindler! If there was any justice in this land, you would lie in the dust before me! Because I am your queen! <gasps> It's over. Oh, oh, this is a wonderful feeling, Jane. Years of humiliation and suffering now finally revenged. I have plunged a knife straight into her heart. Just missed it. You went too far. You mocked her in front of Lester, her favourite. Mocked her? I humiliated her. And Lester was here to see it. Oh, Oh, how I struck her down. He was there, watching me, giving me strength. Sir Mortimer, it did not... I heard everything. Leave us. Yes, sir. Mistress. Uh, what a victory. <laughs> you stamped her into the dust. You are Britain's queen. She was like some common criminal. The courage you showed, I was awestruck. Mm. You're a goddess. You spoke with the Leicester. You gave him my letter, my picture. The scorn you heaped on her. You were dazzling. Uh, You're the most beautiful woman on this earth. Sir Mortimer, please. What did Lord Leicester say? What will happen now? Leicester? Leicester's a pitiful coward. He'll do nothing for you. Forget him. What? We don't need him. You have me. What, what power do you have? The Queen will show you no mercy. We must act tonight. Risk everything. You'll be free before dawn. Tonight? It's not possible. My friends nearby. Hiding in a chapel. A priest has heard our confession and granted us absolution. We're ready. But this is too sudden. I have keys. I'll let them into the castle tonight. We'll kill the guards and take you from your cell. And Pollard? We'll be the first to die. No, oh, this is abominable. Our sins are already forgiven. The sacrament absolves me even if I have to kill the queen. No, no, Mortimer! Oh, this is too much blood. Life's nothing to me without you. Without my love for you. I don't care for anything or anyone. Don't look at me like that. They can drag me to Tyburn through the streets, burn me with their irons, tear my limbs apart. I only want to hold you in my arms. Keep away my from love. me. Be close to you. Give Kiss the heat of your mouth. God's name, sir. Only a madman what? gives up bliss. Gives up embracing it when God has placed it in his hand. I'll save you. And then you'll Is be mine. Is my fate to be thrown from one terror to the next? <laughs> Was I born to create nothing but fury? Have love and hate conspired against me? <laughs> they want to behead you. Sever your slender white neck with an axe. Give the god of love what will soon be taken by death. <laughs> your beauty. Your beautiful hair. I am your slave forever. Sir, respect my suffering even if you don't respect me. Your crown has fallen from your head. You only have your beauty now, and I'll risk everything for it. It drives me on, headlong, towards the executioner's house. You'll save me from this madman! Such bravery deserves the greatest reward. Why should a brave man shed his blood? Life is the highest good. Anyone who throws it away for nothing is a madman. You are what? Let me go! 
You came here to save me. Show yourself. Uh, Show your desire. Uh, you did to Rizzio. You did to Bothwell. Don't speak of them to me. Bothwell was a tyrant to you, and you fell trembling at his feet. If that's how it's done, then I'll... Uh, no, leave me alone. You're insane. You'll tremble at my feet, Masters, too. Masters, uh, they're coming. Armed men, they're surrounding the castle. I'll protect you. Jane, Jane, save me from him. Where can I go? I hear a lunatic and inside murderers. Come away, my lady. I'm coming. Mortimer! Mortimer! The gates! Lock the gates! Uncle, what's happening? Where is the murderess? She must be locked away in the darkest dungeon. What is it? The Queen. The Queen? Which Queen? The Queen of England has been murdered on the road to London. Murdered? Elizabeth murdered? No. It's a dream. Mortimer. Oh, Kelly? Run, Mortimer. Run. Why? He did it. The madman did it. It's true. Yes. Save yourself. She's dead. Then Mary has England's throne. No. She's alive. And it means death for us. Alive? The knife caught in her cloak, and Shrewsbury fought him off. Who did it? It was Sauvage there, Barnaby from Toulon. The one who sat brooding in the chapel. He wanted to take the shortest path, free the Church of God with one stroke, become a martyr. He told only the priest and attacked her on the road to London. She'll kill us all. Run. They're surrounding the estate. Fate pursues you, my Lady Mary. Cruel and relentless. Now you will die. I'm heading north. Where will you go? I'll stay here. I'll do everything to save her. And if I fail... My bed will be upon her grave. Davison. My Lord Burley. The death warrant must be written immediately for Her Majesty to sign. Well, go! There's no time to lose. It will be done. My Lord Burley. Lester. You get this inscrutable look on your face when you're sniffing out crimes of state, Burley. You must be pleased. A shocking offence, and those who committed it still unknown. There will need to be a court of inquiry, of course. Words weighed in evidence, glances, even thoughts. Thoughts themselves put on trial. And at the centre of it all, you. You, my Lord Lester, I acknowledge as my master. My eloquence could never achieve what yours is able to. It was you who persuaded the Queen, behind my back, to travel to Fotheringay. Behind your back? When did I ever hide my actions from you? So it wasn't you. The Queen insisted on taking you? Say what you mean. Her Majesty trusted your good faith, only to be viciously mocked and betrayed. Is this the concern and mercy which possessed you so suddenly in State Council, that the steward is now weak and bowed, her blood not worth spilling? It's a good ploy, Lester, with a sharp point, but too sharp. And now it's broken. Come with me now and repeat this in front of the Queen. I will see you there, my lord. Be sure not to lose your eloquence on the way. He's seen through me. If he has the proof, if the Queen learns there was correspondence between myself and Mary, then I am finished. All my advice to her will be branded deceitful and disloyal, and Fotheringay seen as the final mockery. I exposed her to her hated enemy. She'll never forgive me that. Everything now will seem premeditated. The bitter words she was forced to listen to, Mary's scorn and her triumphant laughter. Even the murder attempt. She'll think I was behind it, that I armed the madman with his dagger. There's no way out. Who's that? Lord Lester. Mortimer. What are you doing? Get away from here. They're after you too. Get away. Away from me. They know about the secret meeting at Obespeint. What do I care? That the murderer was there. This is of your own making. How dare you drag my name into it. I don't know you. I want nothing to do with assassins. You've been discovered. I came to warn you. No. After the murder attempt, Burley had Mary's room searched. They found... What? A letter the Queen was writing to you. Asking you to keep your word. Promising you her hand in marriage. Wanting to know if you still had her picture. Death and damnation. Lord Burley has the letter. 
I'm finished. You can still save yourself. And her. Swear on oath you're innocent. Make up reasons, excuses, anything to stop the worst happening. There's nothing I can do now. I'm making for Scotland. It's up to you now. Hmm. We shall see. Guards! You shameful coward! I deserve it for trusting you. Save yourself. I won't name you. I'll keep my mouth shut. I want no part of you, even in death. My lord, arrest this man. He's a traitor. His plot has been uncovered. I will go to the Queen and inform her. <laughs> what do you want with me? Now then, sir. You are slaves to a tyrant. Pitiful slaves. I am free. Oh, Get the dagger off him. Sir. I curse you all who have betrayed their God and their true Queen. You broke faith with Mary, the Queen of Earth and Heaven, and sold yourself to a bastard Queen. Get round him. Get behind him. Back. Back. I couldn't save you, Mary Stuart, so I'll sacrifice myself to you. Holy Mother, pray for me. Receive my soul into heaven. No! Oh! Lester is a traitor. Your Majesty. Mocking me in front of his mistress. No woman has ever been so betrayed, Burley. What powers did he use? What magic arts to influence the will of your majesty to such a degree? I'll die of shame. I went to humiliate her, and I am the one derided. Why wouldn't I believe him? He was devoted to me. Who can I trust when even Lester lies to me? I made him who he is. He was always the closest to my heart. While he betrayed you for his deceitful Scottish queen. The death warrant. Where is it? It's ready. She must die. And he will witness it, and then he must die himself. Have him taken to the tower. I will appoint peers to be his judges. He will want to speak with you, try to justify... How his... can he? This letter convicts him. His crime is clear. But you are kind and gracious. If you see him... I will not see him. Never. Never again. He's not to be admitted. Your Majesty, Lord Lester. Oh, the arrogance of the man. I will not see him. The Queen forbids him to enter. Yes, my lord. But, but maybe he... He could have had reasons. This could be Mary trying to separate me from him. Oh, she's cunning. What if she wrote the letter to do just this? Make me mistrust him and ruin the man she hates? Your Majesty, Burley. sit down. So it's you forbidding me to enter? This is outrageous! I will not be turned away. If Burley's received, so will I be. You're very bold, sir, to storm in here against orders. As are you, my lord, to issue them. I obey only the Queen's word. Then get out! This is not my gracious Elizabeth. That is his voice. My Elizabeth, if she has listened to him, would allow me the same. Speak! Worsen your crime! Deny it! Can we first have this irritating man leave us? He will stay. I command it. Why do we need him? I want to talk with my queen, whom I worship. A few moments only, to hear my side of this. I want to tell you why I did what I did. Your heart is the only judge I'll accept. My heart's already condemned you. Show him the letter. Majesty. Mary Stuart's handwriting. Read it. Do you deny it? Secret contact with her? Being sent her portrait? Raising her hopes of rescue? My conscience is clear. What she's written is the truth. Condemned. From his own mouth. Take this traitor to the tower. I'm no traitor. I was wrong to keep it secret, but my intentions were noble. To expose the enemy, to reveal their plans. Oh, excuses. How did you do this, my lord? It was a dangerous game, but I'm the only one at this court who dare play it. The world knows how much I hate Mary Stuart. The rank I hold, the trust in which I'm held, must dispel any doubt. Why then conceal it? You, my lord, talk before you act. I act first, and then talk. Like you're talking now. Talking because you must. <laughs> And you must be proud of yourself. You've stopped treachery. You've saved your queen. You know everything. Or well, so you say. Nothing escapes your beady eye. Hmm? But if it hadn't been for me, Mary Stuart would now be free. Please, tell us how. Her Majesty spoke alone with Mortimer. She confided in him. She wanted Mary killed. Something Paulet had refused to do for her. True? How did you... How do you know about this? You, my lord, 
Failed to realise that Mortimer was deceiving you. Failed to see he was a rampant papist and Mary's slave. A fanatic who came here to free her and murder the Queen. Mortimer! It was through him that Mary sent her letters to me and how I knew of his plan. She was to be freed today. He told me himself as I had him arrested before he killed himself in despair. I've been deceived by Mortimer. All this happened just now, after I left you. For my own sake, I prefer him still alive. His testimony would clear me of suspicion. You say he killed himself, or was it you? <laughs> Guard? My lord. Report to Her Majesty how Mortimer died. Lord Leicester summoned me and ordered the knight arrested as a traitor. Mortimer drew his dagger, cursing Your Majesty, and before we could disarm him, he stabbed himself in the chest. Thank you. The Queen has heard enough. What an abyss of monstrosities. Sir, tell me. Who was it saved you? Lord Burley? Did he know of the danger threatening you? Could he stop it? He died quickly, this Mortimer. And so conveniently. I don't know what to believe. Will this hateful woman always cause me so much pain? She has to die. I vote for her death. I advised before not to execute her unless the enemy rose again. Now... The death warrant should be issued immediately. Yes, and in recognition of his loyalty and sincerity, I would advise Lord Leicester oversee the execution. Why me? What better way to rid yourself of any lingering suspicion than to preside over the beheading of the woman you've been accused of loving? My lord advises well. So be it. Go, then. Your Majesty... Your Majesty. Shrewsbury. Has it happened? H has it been done? H have you signed her death warrant? They're forcing me. Oh, no one can force you. You're the Queen. The people are fearful and angry, and you are beside yourself. You're being provoked. You cannot judge this now. Judgment has long since been passed, my Lord Shrewsbury. You see how they press me? Your Majesty, delay signing. Collect your thoughts. Wait for a calmer time. Wait. Delay. Don't rush. While your country goes up in flames, while your enemy prepares to murder you. You fear Mary alive, but it's her death you should really fear. She will rise from her grave as an avenging spirit who will haunt your reign and turn your people against you. They hate her now, but not once she's dead. She'll be mourned as a victim of your hate and envy. And when you ride through London, you'll see the change in them, the people who now cheer you. Fear will walk ahead of you through the deserted streets, because whose head is safe after her anointed one has fallen? Why did you save my life, Shrewsbury? Why didn't you let the dagger go into me? <sighs> All this conflict would be over, and I could lie in a quiet grave, free from doubt and free from guilt. I'm tired of this rain, tired of this life. If one of us has to die for the other to live, why can't it be me? Let my people choose. I give back my sovereignty to them. I have lived only for their good, not for myself. God is my witness. If they want the happier rule of a younger queen, this obsequious Stuart, they can have it. I'm willing to step down. I can go back to Woodstock, to its solitude where I spent my childhood, where there is no royal necessity. I'm not made to be a sovereign. They must be hard and unyielding, and I am not. You can't choose peace for yourself and leave your, your kingdom at war. Think of the church, of the old superstitions returning with a steward. Think of the souls of every one of your subjects. How you act now means they will either be saved or lost forever. Shrewsbury saved your life. But I will save England if I have to. That is the greater duty. I want to be left alone. No man can offer me counsel or consolation in this matter. 
I will take it before the highest judge, and what he decides, I will do. You can withdraw, my lords. Majesty. Majesty. <clears throat> Davison? Your Majesty. You have something for me? Your Majesty, you commanded... What is it? The warrant, Your Majesty. Give it to me. Remain outside. Majesty. I will ring for you. I am my people's slave. I must respect the voice of the people and win their favour. Satisfy the whims of a mob. Kings should not have to please anyone or ask for applause for the action they take. I respected justice and hated tyranny my whole life. And now, when I need to act, my own hands are tied. My own example condemns me. If I was my sister Mary, queen before me, I could shed royal blood to my heart's content. But was it my choice to be so just? Wasn't it necessity that demanded it? The scourge of kingly free will? Only my people's love has held me to this disputed throne. Enemies surround me, wanting to destroy me. Pope has excommunicated me. I've been betrayed by France, and the Spanish wage war against me at sea. I'm a defenceless woman fighting alone against the world. With virtuous behaviour, I try to cover the weakness of my claim, the stain on my royal birth by which my father disgraced me. It's in vain. My enemies have set this steward against me to haunt me like a lingering malevolent ghost. No, it must end. This fear has to end. Her head will fall. I want to have peace. She's the fury of my life, a tormenting spirit. Wherever I've planted joy or hope, this hellish viper lies in wait. Calling herself around my lover, around my bridegroom. Mary Stuart is my affliction. When she's dead, I am free. The disdain with which she looked at me, as if her eyes could burn me. You're powerless. I am the stronger. My weapon is death. Bastard, Emma. Only while you live and breathe. All doubt about me is destroyed the moment you are. As soon as England can no longer choose, my blood is pure, and I am born legitimate. Majesty. Davison, take the warrant. I'm placing it in your hands. Your Majesty, you have signed. I was asked to sign it, and I have. A piece of paper decides nothing. A name cannot kill. But your name, Majesty, decides everything. It will kill like lightning. This orders her execution at dawn tomorrow. She dies as soon as I hand this over. Then God, sir, has placed a weighty business in your hands. What? Pray that he enlighten you with his wisdom. I will leave you to your duty. Do you want me to deliver this warrant for execution? That is a decision that you... I can't must... make a decision. I can only obey you. Make it clear to me what you want. What am I to do with this death warrant? Its name declares what it is. So it is to be acted on immediately? I did not say that. Then you want me to retain it? At your own risk, but you will be responsible for the consequences. Holy God! 
Your Majesty, please, tell me what you want. I want this business never mentioned again so that finally I may have some peace. It is only one word. Say it. Tell me what I must do. I have said You have not said anything. Now, please, take pity on me. I, I, I have only held this office for a few months. I'm not used to the world of courts and kings. Make my duty clear to me. Don't ask me to do this. You will do what your office commands. <laughs> She's gone. She's left me. What do I do? Do I keep it? Do I hand it over? My lord. Davison. My lord. Burley, you brought me into state office. Now you have to free me from it. Let me go back to the shadows where you found me. I don't belong in this place. What is this? Have courage, sir. Where's the warrant? Has the Queen signed it? I have it. Signed. Give it to me. I can't do that. What? She hasn't told me her clear wishes. She's signed it. Give me it. Do I keep it or do I not? In God's name, what do I do? Give it to me. If you delay now, you're finished. And if I act too rashly, I am also finished. You're a fool. You've lost your mind. Give me the warrant. Wait, wait, wait no. Uh, give it back to me. This is ruin. Melville. We meet again. I won't ask how you are or tell you how we've suffered. There will be time for that later. How is the Queen now? She has no fear. And the tears she's wept have been over Leicester's betrayal and Mortimer's death. And the grief of his uncle, Pollitt. Always the fate of others. Never herself. Where is she? Can you take me to her? Here she comes. Don't be sad. Don't cry, Jane. You should be rejoicing with me. My suffering will soon be over. My chains will fall from me. My prison open and my soul will be carried to heaven on angels' wings. Death comes to me now as a friend. Comforting, healing, covering my dishonour in its black wings. No matter how low he's fallen, man is made noble again by death. I feel the crown on my head once more, and pride and dignity in my soul. Melville? Madam. Stand, sir, stand. You have come a believer of my faith, who will stand beside me in the hour of my death. Madam. Jane, my loyal Jane. I bequeath this scarf to you. I embroidered it myself. So many tears are woven into it. When it's time, cover my eyes with it. This is the last service I will ever ask from you, my beloved Jane. I can't bear this. Come, embrace me. <laughs> Go now. <laughs> Everything's arranged. I leave this world in debt to no one. Only one thing, Melville, still weighs on my soul. Tell me. I am on the edge of all eternity. I will soon stand before God, the highest judge. But I haven't yet made my peace with him. I am your priest. I will hear your last confession and allow you to make your peace with God. I bring you this host, blessed by the Holy Father himself. I kneel before you, as you used to kneel before me. In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, Mary Stuart, have you examined your heart do you vow and swear to confess the truth before the God of truth? My heart is open before you and him. What sin weighs on your conscience since you were last reconciled with God? My heart has been full of hate and thoughts of revenge. Do you repent this sin? As truly as I pray that God forgives me. And what other sin does your conscience accuse you of? I agreed to my husband's murder. 
Darnley the king. I'd given my heart to the seducer Bothwell, and afterwards I married him. I have tried to atone for it, but my soul has never let me. Go then, and make atonement by your death. I now hear, by virtue of the power given to me, do grant the absolution of all your sins. The body of Christ, which was given for you, the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Or take it. It is the privilege only of kings and priests, but the Holy Father has granted you this favoured grace. As your earthly body is joined with God, so will you be there in his kingdom of joy, where no guilt or tears reside. You have one last ordeal. Lord Lester and Lord Budley are here. Lady Stuart, I come to hear your final commands. Thank you, my Lord Burley. It is Her Majesty's wish that nothing reasonable is denied you. Tell my sister Queen that I forgive her my death with all my heart. May God bless her and grant her a prosperous reign. My, my lady? What is it, Jane? The time has come. Jane, walk with me. No women are allowed. They're weeping and wailing. Jane will not weep. I give you my promise. Do not separate me from my loyal friend. I want her hand to lead me to my death. Very well. Then nothing else holds me in this world. My Saviour and Redeemer, as you opened your arms on the cross, open them now to receive me. Lord Lester. My lady. I'm leaving this world, leaving behind earthly temptation. I can say without blushing now, Lester, I've overcome my weakness for you. Farewell, and if you can, live a happy life. You sought the love of two queens and betrayed, sacrificed, my gentle, loving heart for her proud one. Go to Elizabeth. Kneel at her feet. And may your reward not prove your punishment. Now I have nothing more on this earth. I told myself I'd feel nothing. I'd smother the voice of my heart, watch indifferent as her head fell. Forget pity. Turn your eyes into stone. I must watch her. I must witness it. No. I can't. I can't watch her die. It started. Voices. It's quiet. A maid's removing her robe. A stool moved closer to the block. She's kneeling down on the cushion. She's laying her head down. Lord Shrewsbury. Your Majesty. Welcome, my Lord. What brings you here at this hour? My concern for your good name, Your Majesty. I've just come from Mary's secretaries in the Tower. Curl has now sworn the Babington letters were forged. Swore that he'd wrongly accused her. He's out of his mind. You said so. I beseech you, Your Majesty. Demand there be a new inquiry. Very well. Summon Davison immediately. I do this, my lord, because you want it. Not because I believe my peers have judged them wrongly. Majesty. I'm glad there's still time. I want no shadow of doubt falling across my royal honour. Majesty. 
Yes, sir, the, wa the warrant I gave you, where is it? The warrant? I asked you to safeguard it to gain time. But... Uh, you remember? So, now give it to me. Matters have moved on. There's to be a fresh inquiry. What's wrong with you? Where is it? Lord Burley has it. Did I not order you to keep it in your care? No, that was not what you told me, Your Majesty. Oh, so I'm lying, no. you wretch. When did I order you to give it to Burley? Not in certain clear words, but... Ah, oh, here he is, my Lord Burley. Long live my royal mistress. And may all enemies of England die like the Stuart. Oh. Tell, tell me, Lord Burley, did you receive the warrant from my hand? No, madam, from Davison. Did Davison hand it to you in my name? No, he did not. And you carried it out without knowing my will? The sentence was just. The world cannot blame us. But you were wrong to act faster than our heart's mercy. Remove yourself from our presence. Majesty. You, Davison, shall be taken to the tower. I want capital charges brought against you. Shrewsbury, from now on, you shall be my guide. Alas, Your Majesty, I must return to you the seal of England. Shrewsbury, you cannot leave me now. Forgive me. I am too old and my hand is grown too stiff to set the seal on your recent deeds. Live and reign well. Your rival queen is dead. Send for Lord Leicester. Lord Leicester asks to be excused. He's on board a ship to France. Stay! Summon! No, leave me. Leave me! She's dead. The arrow has left the bow and found its mark. The thought makes my body shudder. At last I have room on this earth. It was for my realm. I could not have stopped it. I am the Queen of England. The grave has ended my fear. And who'll dare to say I did it? I am the Queen of England. In Mary Stewart by Friedrich Schiller, Mary was played by Meg Fraser, Elizabeth by Alexandra Mathie, Lester by Robin Lang, Mortimer by Matthew Pigeon, Burley by Richard Greenwood, Shrewsbury by Paul Young, Paulet by Jimmy Chisholm, Jane Kennedy by Wendy Seeger, Davison by Laurie Brown, Orbspeen by Grant O'Rourke, and Melville by John Buick. Mary Stewart was translated by David Harrower and adapted for radio by Robin Brooks. The director was Gaynor McFarlane.